Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortez. We've been doing a little schedule shuffling on our daily talk show, Barnstable This Morning, and we've rolled out our new lineup this past week. In addition to moving around some of your old favorites, we added a brand new guest this week, freshman state representative Randy Hunt, who will join us each Monday at 8.10 a.m. In his first Barnstable This Morning interview, Representative Hunt on January 31st highlighted some of the bills he's filed or refiled to begin his first term, and he discussed his overall legislative priorities. Well, I have uh, put about 10 bills in myself. Some of these are refiles, meaning that they were in the last session and they're happening again. But I'm going to focus on three. Uh, the three, two of them are related to health care. One is to... Uh, provide some relief for small businesses on the cost of health care by raising the threshold for which small businesses are held to subsidize health care insurance. Mm -hmm. Another one is to relax the what's called the minimum creditable coverage. That's the, the minimum standard for a health insurance plan in Massachusetts so that you don't get penalized on your tax return. Mm -hmm. I think we need to relax that for a couple of years while we get our hands around the bigger issue of skyrocketing health insurance premiums. And the third one is something that I bring as a CPA, and that is I would like to study the possibility of, of simplifying the personal income tax laws in Massachusetts and essentially bring it down to taking your federal taxable income, multiplying it times the rate, and voila, you're done, there's your state income tax. It would simplify things and actually release a number of people from jobs at the Department of Revenue to go over to uh, weed out and chase down fraud, waste, and abuse in our other departments. On Tuesday, February 1st, Barnstable Police Chief Paul McDonald discussed with us a recently completed crime statistics report in the town of Barnstable. The end result is good news for public safety. In 2010, there were over 2,000 fewer calls for service than in 2009. And overall, calls are at their lowest levels since 2006. Here, the chief explains the reason for that improvement, and he also breaks down some other key stats contained in the report. The overall year-to-year -year cost of service, the reduction, is directly attributable to two things. One, the, uh, the homeless problem on Main Street Hyena certainly has not been a problem this year that has been in the last several years. Mm -hmm. Usually, that cost of service alone accounts for about 23 2,300 to 2,400 calls. That's been reduced by almost 900 calls for service. That coupled with the number of false alarms, our false alarm reduction because of the new ordinance the town passed three or four years ago, that's down almost 30%. So that accounts for another 1,200 calls reduction, which is good because this is what we're trying to do. You know, rather than answer these calls, we're looking for ways to free up the police officer's time so we can put them out on foot patrols or bicycle patrols. That's what the residents are looking for, looking to get the police officers out of the cruises and back out onto the streets and to into different villages, and the only way we can do that if we free up their time. Now let's talk a little bit about Part 1 crimes, and these are the, the, the more serious crimes of murder, rape, robbery, aggravated assault, burglary, larceny, audio, uh, auto theft, and arson. And uh, altogether, uh, all of these crimes in combination are down 3% year over year, down 4% since uh, 2006. Are, are those encouraging statistics to you? Yes, yeah, so they're very encouraging. You know, these are part one crimes. These are crimes that every law enforcement agency, whether it be a state, municipal, county, or tribal law enforcement, they have to report these crimes to the FBI. Then every, then every year the FBI puts these figures out, and they rate you state by state. You know, and these are the ones that really, you know, tell you the type of crime problem that you have within, within the town. And as you can see, they're down 4% over a five-year period. And our goal is to keep that going down 2 to 3% every year over the next several years. And we can do that by attacking the root cause of most of the problems here, and that is the drug offenses. And if you look at the next page on part two, you'll see the drug, drug offenses are actually going up. Yes. Well, they're going up not because the problem's getting worse. They get, the numbers are going up because we're being very proactive and very aggressive going after those type of criminals. This week, we welcome the Hyannis Area Chamber of Commerce to its new time slot on Thursdays with an appearance by Sharon Hawkins, the chair of the Chamber's Board of Directors. We asked Sharon about the search for a new chamber president and CEO and what the board hopes to accomplish with a new leader that perhaps wasn't being accomplished under prior leadership. Here's what she had to say. Well, one of the things that the board has decided to focus on in 2011 is an increased 
uh, focus on uh, sales, uh, marketing, tourism. The Tourism Committee had uh, not existed for a while. We have reinvigorated that Tourism Committee. We have an act of 14 business people on that committee. So we're looking to improve our tourism and marketing for the town so that as a representative of our members, we're going to do things to bring more business to our town and to bring more tourists to our local business. I wonder if you could give us an update on your search. Yes, actually, we've had over 60 people that have applied for the job. Um, we've been very impressed by the quality of people that have applied. It's amazing um, just what talent is out there. We have narrowed it down. Uh, there was a, a process of going from the 60 down to 24, and now we are down to uh, six finalists that are going to be interviewed by the search committee. So, so then what is the timetable for making your final selection, Sharon? Uh, the interviews will be taking place next week, and we hope to make the announcement uh, by the February 23rd, after the February 23rd board meeting. Later on the Thursday show, Finance Director Mark Milne spent some time with us explaining how Governor Deval Patrick's recently released budget proposal may impact our own budgetary process here in Barnstable. Mark believes that the numbers could change substantially between now and the time the FY 2012 state budget is adopted, but his conservative projections have left the town finance department feeling optimistic about the governor's proposal. Yeah, we were uh, in our preliminary development of the 2012 budget, we were expecting that to come in closer to a 10% cut, mm -hmm. um, which would have been closer to a $100 million reduction um, in that account, or eight, about $90 million. So this is actually a little better than what we were anticipating. It's about a 7.5% reduction um, to unrestricted aid. So uh, from a budget planning perspective, that was good news for us. Mm -hmm. um, though we, we get very little in that category of aid anyways, um, still it's you know two and a half percent better or about a hundred thousand dollars better than what we were expecting. Um, the bigger change for us was chapter seventy eight, the proposal for chapter seventy eight. Right. We we're actually projecting a ten percent reduction in that as well. And he actually increased uh his proposals to increase that account uh by um, a little by about a hundred and forty million. So right. We would actually see a slight increase in Chapter 78 as opposed to a 10% reduction. So that's a big swing then for that's the schools. That's a big swing. So all, all in all, local aid for us um, is about a million dollars better than what we we're projecting in our preliminary budget projections based on his proposal. But as you mentioned, it's early in the budget process. The House and the Senate still need to come out with their versions of the budget. And the governor tends to be a little bit more generous, I believe, um, than the legislative branch. Yeah. Now, that, that is kind of an interesting point, Mark, with uh, the, the big swing with the Chapter 70 aid. And, and, you know, it's interesting to talk to you about this as well because everything that you read is like, wow, this is really bad news for the state budget. But in the last two minutes, you've sort of turned this really bad news into good news for the town of Barnstable because you make conservative projections. You know, we, we've always been cautious um, about, uh, you know, where local aid is going to go um, because we've, we've history has shown us that, you know, in any one fiscal year, like we like back in 2004, we were hit 20 percent where other communities were held harmless. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, something like that could happen again to us yeah. uh, by the time this process gets finished. So we're going to proceed forward with our original budget projections, um, be, being cautious. You know, we need to have some recommendations on the table for how we're going to reduce our budget in the event that we do receive a 10 percent reduction. But at the end of the day, if we don't, we should be in pretty good position to be able to maintain services. Remember, if you'd like to see any of these interviews in their entirety, every episode of Barnstable This Morning is available to watch online. You can find them in the town's video archives at town.barnstable.ma.us. Also, to see our revamped weekly schedule, check out the town manager's e-newsletter. That's also available on our website. Well, that's all for now. Everybody have a great weekend. I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.